You know what they say when you tell a tall tale, uh, the, the myth becomes legend and the legend becomes truth. But in this case, this everything we're going to talk about today is the cold hard truth. Now, when Richard Farnsworth took on the role of the Grey Fox in probably one of the greatest Canadian movies in the 1980s and of all time, it was almost like typecasting. It was a perfect fit for the person we affectionately call in Canada the Gentleman Bandit. Bill Miner. Now today we're going to be talking about some of the legend of Bill Miner and what was kind of ironic the whole thing. He wasn't never. He was not Canadian. He was born in the States. Now Ezra Allen Miner, uh, born 1847 in Bowling Green, Kentucky, was an American bandit originally from again uh, the States who served several prison terms for stagecoach robbery. Known for his unusual politeness while committing robberies, he was widely uh, widely nicknamed the Grey Fox, the Gentleman Robber, or the Gentleman Bandit. He is reputed to have been the originator of the phrase, Hands Up. Legend has it that Bill Miner admonished his cohorts to fire their guns when in danger of capture, but do not kill a man. Now, he was featured in the Grey Fox movie. Uh, I think it was an NFP cartoon. It was quite popular, talking about the case where he committed a robbery, and all he picked up was a few dollars and some liver pills. But he was more successful through the years than a lot of people give him credit for. Uh, he was born, again, in Vevey Township, uh, near uh, Oneaga, Ingham Country, County, Michigan, on December 27, 1846. But some people say Bowling Green. He never legally changed his name, which he evidently didn't like, but regarded William Allen Miner as his true name throughout most of his life. He was arrested the first time in 1866 in San Joaquin County, California, and served time there. He was shortly released, but served more time at Placer County, California, and later Al Calaveras County, California. He was discharged in 1880. He then formed a partnership with Bill Leroy as W.A. Morgan to rob a stagecoach. Leroy was caught in Lynch, but Miner escaped. He was later caught for another robbery in Tulamone uh, County, California, and was released from St. Quentin in 1901. After his third prison term, Miner moved to pro with the province of B.C., where he adopted the pseudonym George Edwards and is believed to have staged B.C.'s first ever train robbery on September 10, 1904, at Silverdale, which is about 35 kilometers east of Vancouver, just west of Mission City. It is often claimed that Miner was the robber, but neither he nor his accomplices were ever tried conclusively to the Silverdale Heights. It is also widely reported that Silverdale train robbery was the first in Canada, but of course Peter Gower's definite study, interred with their bones in 2005, cites a train robbery in Port Gretton, Ontario, 30 years prior as the first. Now, Miner was eventually caught after a botched payroll train robbery near Kamloops at Mount A. Creek, then known as Ducks. Choosing the wrong car, they managed only to rob $15 plus a bottle of kidney pills that Miner picked off off a shelf. Miner and his two accomplices, Tom Shorty Dunn and Louis Colcahoon, were located near Douglas Lake, B.C. after an extensive manhunt. A posse surrounding them while they were lunching in the woods, Miner presented himself as George Edwards and claimed that he and his cohorts were prospectors. The officer in charge of the posse suspected he had encountered an nefarious train robbing gang and challenged the claim, putting them under arrest. Now, when Dunn attempted to fire at the police, he was eventually shot in the leg and then gave up quickly after being wounded. Kul uh, was disarmed by an officer standing nearby and Miner never drew his weapon. Miner's arrest and subsequent trial in Kamloops caused a uh, media spect spectacle not just in Canada but internationally. Apparently the most damaging evidence against him was the bottle of kidney pills that Miner had picked up during the Ducks robbery. Upon his conviction, Dunn and uh, Kalkaloon were transported by train to a provincial penitentiary in New Westminster. By that time, Miner's celebrity status had risen to a point that the tracks were repeatedly, repeatedly lined with throngs of supporters, many of whom expressed satisfaction with the fact that someone had taken a very unpopular CPR to task. Now, while serving time in the B.C. penitentiary, Miner escaped in 1907 and was never recaptured in Canada. He moved back to the States, becoming once again involved in robberies in the South at Gainesville in 1909. 
There he served more prison time and escaped twice. He died in a prison farm at Milledgeville, Georgia of gastritis, contracted from drinking brackish water during the previous escape attempt. Now, Miner's time in B.C. propelled celebrity there in many ways. Uh, the B.C. Sc- cl- cell restaurant chain, the Kagan's Steakhouse and Bar, have named drinks and their Billy Miner pie after the train robber. The Royal Decor also showed many photos of Miner. A mural depicting Miner's robbery near Monte Creek has been painted on the exterior south wall of the Cactus Jack Saloon and Dance Hall, located in a building at the corner of 5th Avenue and Lansdowne Street in Kamloops. Now, Maple Ridge, B.C. features the Billy Miner Pub, which is located in Story Port Amy on the bank of the Fraser River. The pub is located in the original Bank of Montreal building, built in the early 1900s. It has been speculated that Miner left a hidden cache of loot in the forest south of Silverdale after the first robbery, and local historians believe he used these monies to fund his escape, while others surmise that today there is still hidden loot to be found there. Now, an original song titled The Battle of Bill Minor was written by singer-songwriter Philip Mills, Eugene Quinn, and recorded by the San Francisco Bay Area band, The Blackout Cowboys. Now, again, The Grey Fox, very popular movie. Check it out on uh, on Hollywood Suite or on uh, pay-per-view, as we say. Uh, probably uh, more... Uh, a more uh, what do you call impressive uh, Canadian Western movie has never been made, and it has aspects. It has a feel, sort of like a little bit of Norman Jewison with a kind of a low end Clint Eastwood style. It's quite interesting. Richard Farnsworth was robbed. He should have won Best Actor for the Oscars that year. And Jackie Burroughs is great as well. And there's a whole bunch of great Canadian character actors in the movie. Now, Miner is uh, Miner is buried in Memorial Hill Cemetery in Millersville, Georgia. It was discovered that his headstone was in the wrong location, name spelled wrong, and was the wrong year of his death. A new headstone was eventually put in the correct spot and spelled correctly. The old one was kept where it is. Now, Mount Miner near Princeton, formerly Ball Mountain or Baldy, was renamed in Bill Miner's honor in response to a motion by Princeton Board of Trade in 1952. Miner had lived on the ranch owned by Jack Budd, which was on the other side of this mountain from Princeton, while playing, playing the robbery at Ducks. Now, the Tin Whistle Brewing Company, which is a microbrewery from Penticton, launched a red ale titled Hands Up as a commemoration to Miner. Now, his principal biography is the Gray Fox, the true story of Bill Miner, Last of the Old Time Battens, which was uh, published by Mark Duggan and Joel uh, John Bosenecker, uh, University of Oklahoma Press in 1992. Now, uh, in 2021, there was talk of a remake or a, like a, a TV series of the uh, the Gray Fox Legend, but the movie is so perfect. Again, um, you look at the, the the shitty Canadian tax break movies of the late 70s, early 80s, and the Gray Fox shines like a piece of gold in a in what they call in the pan in BC. And Richard Farnsworth, not say he became a sex symbol at his age, but I know women of a certain age over the age of 45, fell in love with them, and uh, the same, the Sam Elliott style uh, that uh, is prevalent now in many of the older actors, he invented that, but Farns worked, again, originally a stuntman, but his acting performance is just uh, beyond to beyond, and you look at the uh, uh, the character Misery plays, there's a lot of connection there, even though that's a, you know, a police officer detective slash, but Farnsworth, my God, what a, just chewed up scenery with, and his grizzled face told more about what he, see, he believed in the legend, he said that in published reports, he said he really got into a part because he felt he wanted to do Bill Miner justice, so. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to our uh, latest in our Canadian History uh, podcast. And um, uh, Bill's uh, passing, uh, just want to talk about this. This was his pseudonyms. W.A. Morgan, George W. Edwards, Ezra Allen uh, Minor, Gray Fox, Gentleman Robber, Gentleman Bandit, and uh, again, the originator of the great phrase, which we don't want to hear in public other than him, hands up. Thanks for listening. Bye.